pray that as we go forward today, that we could uh, seek after your will and bring honor and glory and praise to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Continue in songs of praise.
thank you that we can look to you in our times of need, in our times of joy. God, you are there for us when we need you. And we just thank you that you are here with us now. And we just pray a blessing on this service. We ask this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much, praise team. Uh, the scripture reading today is found John eleven thirty eight to 44, if you'd like to turn there with me. It's John 11, verses 38 to 44. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there was a bad odor, for he has been in there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Let's give our prayerful attention to Jason Herb as he brings the message, losing the grave clothes. Good morning. That's actually pretty good. I'm impressed. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Um, last Sunday, I had an opportunity to uh, speak out at Zurich. And so that required about an hour and 15 minute drive uh, from my place to there. And right last Sunday, you remember how beautiful it was, right? It's, oh, <laughs> as a worship music playing, it was, uh, it was lovely. But again, um, even on days like this where we're having the rain, we uh, do recognize we're going to have some nice May flowers coming. And uh, we've got uh, lots of nice warm days ahead of us. So anyway, I am absolutely thrilled um, to be able to be here this morning and to uh, share the word that God has placed on my heart. Um, yeah, I've said this many times before, but uh, your congregation, I just have a, a real soft spot in my heart for you. Um, Pastor Brent um, is a dear friend of mine, and uh, especially over uh, the pandemic, we met often. And I don't know if you know this, brother, but there was many times where you were very encouraging to me, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Right? That was quite a season we went through, right? The pandemic, right? Um, definitely needed to, uh, to have the support of others as, as we weathered that crazy season, right? Um, I want to also give a bit of a, uh, an update before I uh, go into the message in terms of the work of Youth Unlimited. We're back in the school. Nobody excited about that? Okay. <laughs> I am, I'll tell you that. I, I, I. It was like close to 25 months of not being able to serve in that school, and I missed it immensely. Um, I went into the pandemic calling myself an omnivert. You know, somewhat extroverted, somewhat, you know, introverted. Mm, I am an extrovert, <laughs> right? It's like, oh, man, when I couldn't be with people, it was just like, oh, this is crazy. Um, and so anyway, it's wonderful to be back in the school helping in a number of classes. On Friday, we had a track meet all day long. So I was able to uh, cheer on young people and, um, yeah, just have good conversations. There's already a, a number of young people that I know that God has me uh, crossing paths with. Um, you know, assisting their families working through some difficult things, right? That's why, right? That's why. And I, I'm sure there's a number of you over there, I look specifically in that section, that are either at WO now or who have been through there. Um, yeah, just, I have such a heart for that school. And so I'm, I'm incredibly thankful that once again we can be serving there. And uh, again, just wanting to be the hands and feet of Jesus to, uh, to minister. I want, I want kids to, uh, to encounter Jesus, right? Um, and I hope this is true for all of us today, that you've encountered Jesus and the change that it makes in our lives, right? So uh, thank you for your support. Um, and I would ask you, please be praying, right? Um, there's some pretty significant issues that kids are dealing with. And uh, man, we just need people praying, right? So uh, I would really covet that. Um, if you think of it uh, regularly, often to pray for the youth at the school, um, you know, God's, God's working there, Right. Um, and it's just a matter of just being patient, just going in every day, showing up and saying, okay, God, what are you doing? <laughs> Where are you working? How can I participate, right? And that's true for all of our lives, wherever God has placed us. 
Um, yeah, so anyway, that's a bit of an update there. Um, yeah, so this morning, uh, as I share with you, uh, this is a message that, that was kind of birthed over uh, a period of time, but in the last couple of weeks, God um, ordered my steps in such a way that I heard a couple of messages, and God really spoke to my heart and helped me to see uh, that I was dealing still with some residual uh, ramifications and uh, just from the, the pandemic, right? And so as I share this morning, I really believe that the message today is a word of encouragement. Um, maybe there is someone here. See to me if there's even one person. Last week at Zurich, had an opportunity to do some prayer ministry after the service, and it was interesting how there were some people who had spoken to their, into their situation. You might be in a place right now where you're thriving. <laughs> you're doing really well, right? Um, there's parts of this message that are also a reminder for those times when the trials do show up and how we can approach them and our perspective of that. But um, the message today really began <laughs> to take form, and uh, it was about two weeks ago we met together as Youth Unlimited staff. It was the first time we were able to meet in person again, which was wonderful. There was about 80 of us, so uh, ac across southwestern Ontario there's about 80 of us workers that are either working in schools, in drop-in centers, in our communities, and it was just wonderful to have us all together. But as I looked at the itinerary for the day, I noticed that the person who was sharing the devotional, because we always have some staff member share the devotional that morning, and it was, it was Dave Lane. And I'm like, that's odd. Why would he be sharing today? Because just to give you some insight and some backstory, uh, his wife, during the course of the pandemic, learned that, learned that she had leukemia. Right? So anybody that had to deal with any kind of medical challenges through the pandemic... Not an easy thing to do. So they discover that she was dealing with leukemia. And uh, just before Christmas, she ended up getting COVID, and she passed away. He's the same age as me, 50 years of age, and all of a sudden now he's a widow. A uh, widower, I guess, is the correct, but you know what I mean. Um, and I'm like, why is he sharing the devotion? Like, you know, like, give the guy a break, right? And, but yet, as he began to share... Um, what God had shown him and been teaching him through this season it was like, wow, like, thank you for your willingness in this place of grief and loss to share your heart with us. So as he was sharing with us, um, he had us look in Job. And I'm not going to take the time to read that portion of scripture at the very beginning of Job in the first chapter where Job is an incredibly blessed man, <laughs> right? Has incredible favor has incredible riches, has a large family, flocks. I mean, just about anything you can imagine <laughs> he had. And he had to the excess. And we see this interesting scene where as the angels, you know, are to and from in the presence of God, Satan shows up with them. And God has an interaction with the enemy and where he points out his servant Job and says, hey, have you noticed him? <laughs> I don't know about you, it's like, I kind of would prefer not to be noticed, <laughs> right? When you hear about what occurs after that interaction, God says, no, he's my faithful servant. And you know what? You could take all of that away from him and he would still remain faithful. And so God says, yeah, you can do it. Go ahead, take it, right? And, and you're like, <laughs> right? What is just, what is going on? Now, it's interesting because actually I do want to take a look there. So if you want to turn to Job chapter 1, I want to look at his response. So, you know, as, this, as Dave Lane was sharing with us two weeks ago, he was talking about those times in life where we're cruising along and things are going incredibly well. And then we have those situations where the rug is pulled out from under us, right? We have something we plan for. It's interrupted. We have a loss that we experience. We experience grief, whatever it is, where we're cruising along and everything's going well, and all of a sudden, these things are stripped away. We have, we're faced with disappointment and grief. And so Job's response, right, after he hears all these messages, hey, you've lost your kids, oh, they all died, right, you've lost all your flocks, everything was removed from him. This was his response. In verse 20, it says, At this, Job got up and tore his robe, and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. 
In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Right? So as he was sharing with us two weeks ago, he talked about the aspect of worship. I don't know about you, right? If I'm completely honest, <laughs> when things are disrupted, so as an example, right? Um, when the pandemic began, I still remember on that Thursday before March break was about to begin, when we, they told us they were extending the March break by one week. And I was devastated. <laughs> by one week. Ended up almost being a 25-month March break. I had no idea, and it's probably a good thing I didn't know at that time, <laughs> right? But in that moment, right, I wasn't going... Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> this is awesome, God, right? You know? No. And to be honest with you, throughout the pandemic, I often struggled. It's like, God. And, and you know, it's so interesting, right? Because often when we're faced with loss or disappointment or grief, there are things that come to the surface, right? Farmers. Um, you know that, I don't know whether you've done this yet, I'm not a farmer, okay, but I, I remember stone picking as a young lad, okay? Every year as the frost would lose its hold, these stones would come up out of nowhere, right? It's like, where was that? <laughs> and often when we experience loss and suffering and pain, there's things that come to the surface, right? Right? And so, um, so anyway, so he was encouraging us uh, with this aspect of how do we respond when we find these sudden disruptions in our life, okay? The first thing he shared with us is the necessity of weeping, of grief. He said, he shared with us openly and honestly and said, I have never cried so much in my life. If I'm honest, I believe that at times we have struggled with that, with grief, and the concept of weeping in the church. I've heard some things shared by well-meaning people who are, are ready to just move forward, you know, just forget about it, just move on. And yet there is a valuable component to being able to properly grieve. So that was his first response to us. The second thing he said to us is that we need to weed out. He said there were things that were said to him that were not from God. <laughs> So he had to weed those things out, right? We know that especially in our difficult seasons, that's when the enemy will come and will try to deposit lies, have us believe things that are not true about ourselves and not true about God. And then the final thing being the aspect of worship. So as I listened to him share, as I listened to him share that day, I paid attention, right? The reality is, is when someone speaks from this very vulnerable place in the midst of his grief, right? It was like, I've got to pay attention because I know that God has something to say to me through this. So I came away from that and I was just reflecting on that. Then the Sunday following that, two weeks ago, um, Pastor James at our church was talking about the resurrection, right? Because it was, it was Easter Sunday. He was talking about the resurrection of Christ. And he uh, was using uh, for his text uh, John 12. So just beyond where we read today, John 12, verse 24, where Jesus says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Right? So Jesus was preparing them, right? As he's having his final days, he's preparing them. Right, So that as they reflect back on these teachings, they go, oh, oh, that's what he was speaking of, right? Jesus being the first, right, uh, like a seed, <laughs> right, died, was, was put in a tomb, was resurrected, and the seed is still flowing from that event. We have benefited today. But the reality is, is for us as well, we have these seasons where it is a death. It will feel like a death. And as I was listening to him speak that Sunday, God was speaking into my heart there as well. Because this pandemic, in many ways, felt like there was a death to some of those things that God has, has called me to. Right? The, uh, there was still opportunity to minister. Right? God opened doors and there were still opportunities to minister to young people in our community. But it was diminished in terms of the capacity. Right? When you walk into a high school... <laughs> When you're surrounded by 1,200 kids, I mean, everywhere, to me, is an opportunity for ministry. Everywhere. 
When you have moments where you're in isolation, right, where we're told you are not to go out unless you're to get your groceries or whatever, right, the opportunities for socialization is not the same, right? Everyone in agreement, (laughs) right? Isn't it good to be together this morning, right? Right? So as I was reflecting on it, it was like, I felt like that, that there was this season where I felt, felt like some things had died, that some of the passion, some of the, the, the enthusiasm. And, and, and there were times where, you know, I was like, God, where are you? What are you doing? It was a season in some ways where I felt like he was quiet. I had often heard in the past about dark night of the soul, you know, those seasons where you're going through a difficult time and it seems like God isn't being loud. <laughs> you know, here in this text, Jesus spoke with a loud voice. It felt like I was hearing crickets. So as I came away from those two specific messages, then it ended up on Easter weekend, I had COVID. My wife and I both ended up dealing with COVID, right? Fun. (laughs) No, right? Wasn't able to do some family things. It was disappointing, right? But uh, on the Tuesday morning following hearing those two messages, I woke up at like 2.15, just anyone who's had COVID, I had a bad cough, right? And then I was awake for like three hours after that. But in that time, I felt like God downloaded the message that I'm speaking to you today, right? And the first part I want to share, and and this is, uh, like again, God has a call for each of us. But I feel like what God has called me specifically to do is to share the things that Jesus is doing in me right now, (laughs) right? As I was laying there in bed, as I was thinking of those two messages in particular, my mind went back to the pandemic. If I'm honest with you, I'm disappointed in myself, right? When you think of the parable of the two builders, right? There's one that builds on sand. There's one that builds on rock. And the thing is, both buildings look great until a storm comes, right? They both look identical, (laughs) <laughs> they're, they're, they're both are really nice, right? And, and so what God showed me is that there's some things in terms of my foundation, in terms of my faith. Too much of my faith is based on my sight, if I'm just being honest with you. So I look back on the pandemic. You know, I, I spent a lot of that time discouraged, sad, <laughs> Right? I know that I missed some things because of that. And so I found myself, and I have been, in this last bit, as things have even opened up, I still feel myself you know, kind of feeling some shame, some disappointment in myself. And as, I, as God brought me in the early morning to that portion of Scripture, what I, where I want us to look back at again, because there's a couple things that God specifically spoke into my heart early that morning. And I want to go back to, um, if we look at verse 41. So it says, they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Then he, uh, sorry, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. As I was laying there waiting to fall back asleep, Right? I felt like God was speaking to me that this is a season where Jesus wants to speak over his church. And not only over his church, but you and I, um, our neighbors, individuals that we cross paths with, the, the effects of the pandemic, right? the losses that we've encountered, the grief that we've experienced, the disappointments. I believe many people have grave clothes still hanging on them where you may feel like I did, where it's like, God, now I'm at the school, now these doors are opening, but I feel like, you know, it's like walking through a spider web. You know that feeling? It's like, get that off of me, hurry up, right? Hope it's not going to, you know, right? It's, ah, right? I'm just getting the heebie-jeebies. Anyway, right? It's like we come out of these seasons, these times in our life, and whether it's the pandemic or a loss of a loved one or a dream that has fallen, right, by the wayside, 
Remember, again, the other part, the component of that, there are times when God allows seemingly a death to occur, and when we come out of that season where, where there's been loss and grief and disappointment, I believe that then you enter into an unprecedented opportunity for growth. The one seed becomes many, depending on how we handle it. See, the reality is, brothers and sisters, is that God is in the business of redeeming those things in our lives. Those things that seem dead. I still remember when God opened a door for me to start serving as a youth pastor. It was after 10 years of it seemingly have, had died. I thought it was never going to happen. I'd always had this heart for youth. And at one point, it was right there, ready to be grasped, and it fell apart. And I waited, and I waited, and I started thinking, you know what, it's never going to come to pass. But look what God has done. I believe with all of my heart that there are individuals here who have had dreams die. Things that, that, that were so alive in you. And you've come to this place where it's like it's never going to happen. Look at the Bible and the stories it contains. There are situation after situation, right? God chose Abram and Sarah. He took the unlikely and impossible. You are not too old. You are not too young. You're not too far gone. I don't know what the enemy's been hitting you with. And again, some of you today are doing really well, and I thank God for that. But some of you have been struggling. And you need to hear a message like this today that Jesus calls to you today like he did that day at the grave of Lazarus. And he calls out and he says, come out! In Jesus' name, come out. And the other part that really struck me as I looked at this, you know, I, I, obviously I didn't think of it first thing in the morning, but later as I studied this portion of Scripture, listen, it says, um, uh, the dead man came out, his hands and feet were wrapped with uh, strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus doesn't say, hey, Lazarus, take that stuff off. What does he do? Jesus said to them, those that were there, take off the grave clothes and let him go. The reality is, is that the body of Christ it is God's desire to use others around us to tangibly be his hands and feet. So that Tuesday morning, as God spoke this to my heart, it's like, I need to get one of my intercessor friends to pray for me. All right, this wasn't about, okay, now I'm going to do my best to shake off these grave clothes. No, I knew that what I had been facing was spiritual oppression. I needed someone to pray for me. So I reached out on Thursday to one of my dear friends, and shared what God had been speaking to my heart. And what was really cool, what was a confirmation, is that this person is part of the healing rooms in Fergus. And when they had met together, or no, Arthur, sorry, Arthur. And when they had met together on Wednesday, as they were praying together, one of the people said, this is a time of unraveling like at Lazarus' grave. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, right? Gives us confirmation. <laughs> and so I had my friend pray for me. I said, hey, this is what I've been dealing with. I've been disappointed in myself. I'm dealing with shame, right? Man, I want to be alive, right? I want to step into all that God has for me. I want to move past this season. And they prayed for me. And that oppression lifted. See, this morning, right, we are surrounded by brothers and sisters. If you have been struggling for a season of time, Man, you know, I think of that scripture in Hebrews where it says, Today, when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. See, the reality is, is in order for us to experience the resurrecting power of Jesus Christ, it comes when we walk in humility. Right? Do you think I really want to go and stand in front of people and share with them that I'm really disappointed? No! But Why? Because if one person steps out of their grave clothes today, then it's all worth it. Amen? Right? He opposes the proud, but he gives grace 
to the humble. So if you have been struggling in some way in your life, whether it's been a death of a dream, whether it's been the effects of COVID, right? One of my daughters graduated during the pandemic, lost a lot of things. <laughs> We've been helping her work through that, not dismissing it, not oh, just, just suck it up. Some people have it worse in their life. No, 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 we can do so much harm. It's like, yeah, you have lost. You have lost. Sorry, honey. Yeah, let's cry together, right? And some of you put on a, 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 a brave face, meet together on a Sunday like this, and you leave and you're still hurting. That's not God's plan. That's not his heart for us. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this morning. God, I thank you that you are so good. You are so good. Lord, I think of Psalm 103. God, you are a God of compassion. Man, I'm so thankful for that. <laughs> I'm thankful, God, that you're a God of the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance. God, I thank you that you're merciful and you're kind and you don't treat me like my sins deserve. Man, I'm thankful for that. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. It cost you a lot. It cost you everything. And yet, freely, you did that for us. And so, Jesus, today, oh, man, my heart is for my, my brothers and sisters here. Lord, for those who've been struggling, for those, Lord, who have been caught up in the grave clothes, right? That cloth that was around his face, he couldn't see clearly. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you haven't given up on us, that you haven't forgotten us. And unless a seed goes into the ground and dies, right? Lord, those seasons in our life where we experience those things and we wonder why. And we go, God, how can you be in this? This hurts so bad. Lord, for me, it, it, it comes to uh, the metaphor of a marathon, right? Those seasons where it's just like, will this ever end? Will I ever get to that finish line? You have crazy thoughts go through your mind in that season. And then when we're going through our challenging seasons and our difficult times, the enemy comes and says, you're never going to make it. You're too far gone. You're too messed up. You don't have any hope. It can't happen for you. All those people all out there, but you're not gifted enough. You're not smart enough. You're not, right? In Jesus' name, I command those lies to stop. And so, Lord, today, Lord, if there's even one person today that's been struggling, God, I pray that they would reach out to one of their brothers and sisters, Lord to be prayed for and to see the grave clothes removed and the grave cloth taken away so that they can see clearly again. Lord, I thank you that your word does not return void. And so, God, I, I just entrust that with you, Father. Lord, you are good. Lord, I pray that your kingdom will come and your will will be done in each of our hearts and lives today. And, Lord, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.